Category 15 Analysis, Parallelisms and Attestations معرفات الاعتبار والمطابعات الشواهد These are matters which scholars take up in the examination of the condition of a hadith. Was its transmitter alone in transmitting it or not? It is well known. Is it well known or not? The expert Abu Hatim Muhammad ibn Hibban al-Tamimi uh, gave an example of the procedure for analyzing reports. And it is as follows. Hamad bin Salama relates an unparalleled hadith, hadith lam yutaba'a alayhi. From Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani, from Muhammad bin Sarin, from Abu Huraira, from Rasulullah sallallahu it is examined. Did a reliable transmitter other than Ayyub relate it from Ibn Sarin? If it is found, it is known that the report has an original version, an asl, to which it goes back. If that is not found, then does a reliable transmitter other than Ibn Sarin relate it from Abu Huraira? If not, does a companion other than Abu Huraira relate it from the Prophet Wasallam? If any of that is found, it is thereby known that the hadith has an original version to which it goes back. If it is not found, the hadith does not have one. An example of parallelism, parallelism would be that what someone... What's the Arabic for a version? Mutaba'ata? I'tibar and mutaba'at, yeah. I'tibar is analysis, yeah, it's mutaba'at. Literally, it yeah, has a parallel, it's followed by another one. Follow, follow, uh, corroborating, yeah, yeah. corroborating narrative, yeah. Yeah, corroborating. Corroborative evidence. Yeah. An example of parallelism would be that someone other than Hamad relates that very same hadith from Ayyub. This is complete parallelism. al mutabaa at tamma If no one but Hamad relates it from Ayyub, then someone else relates it from Ibn Sarin or from Abu Huraira. Or if someone other than Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, relates it from the Prophet sallam, then that also is sometimes termed parallelism without qualification. But it is inferior to the first kind of parallelism to the extent it falls short of it, i.e. the chain is not completely independent. Mm. Uh, it also may be called an attestation, a shahid. If that hadith is not related at all from one of the aforementioned lines of transmission, but another hadith having the same meaning is related, then that is an attestation without parallelism. If another hadith with the same meaning is not related, then the absolute uniqueness at the farad al-mutlaq of the hadith is established Hadith of this kind are divided into the rejected unfamiliar hadith and mardud munkar and the unrejected as stated above. Okay. When they say regarding something like this, Abu Huraira was alone in transmitting it from the Prophet Ibn Sarin, Ibn Sarin was alone in transmitting it from Abu Huraira and Ayyub was alone in transmitting it from Ibn Sarin and Hamad bin Salama was alone in transmitting it from Ayyub, there is an indication that in the non-existence of lines of transmission uh, for parallels of the hadith. Be aware that sometimes the relation of some whose hadith should not be cited as proofs when he is by himself, indeed he may be considered a weak transmitter, may sometimes be included for the sake of establishing parallelism or as the citation of an attestation. Mm -hmm. Bukhari and Muslim in their books mention the hadith of a number of weak transmitters as parallels and attestations. Not every weak transmitter is suitable for this. For that reason, Darqutni and others have said about weak transmitters, X, his transmissions may be taken into consideration. Fulan, yu'taburu bihi, and Y, his transmissions may not be taken into consideration. <laughs> Something like this was pointed out above, and Allah knows best. The following is an example of a parallel and attestation. We heard the hadith of Sufyan bin Uyayna from Amr bin Dinar from Ata bin uh, Abi Rabah from Ibn Abbas in which the Prophet ﷺ said if they had taken its hide and tanned it they would have derived from it some benefit. Mm -hmm. Ibn Juraj related the hadith from Amr from Ata and he did not mention the tanning. The expert Ahmed al Bayhaqi gave a parallel version and attestation of the hadith from Ibn Ayyayna. Osama bin Zayd transmitted a parallel version from Ata. Ahmad al bayhaqi related with his isnad from Usama, from uh, Ata, from Ibn Abbas, this version in which Rasulullah said, Did you not strip its hide off it and tan it so that you could enjoy it? Ahmad bin uh, al bayhaqi gave an attestation, as an attestation, the hadith 
of Abdurrahman bin uh, Wa'ala from <laughs> Ibn Abbas. He said that the Messenger of God وسلم, said, any hide that is ten becomes richly clean. And Allah knows <laughs> it. <laughs> so it was just um, backing up the hadith about the tanning <laughs> tree. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> right. But in that for that example, huh. it, it has to be checked uh, if it's the same story. If it's another story, then it could be very well that the one the one story which is there's no tanning mentioned is an independent situation where that that the ritual purity is not needed. For example, it could use for example like like uh, uh, like uh, for the ceiling to prevent water from going through because skin is a, uh, can 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 really prevent water from going through through. Yeah. As as building material, it doesn't matter if it is ritually pure or not. Who cares about that? That the wall is ritually pure is irrelevant. For example, and all farmers of the world they use dung and so on in building uh, mud stones and so on. So mm. that's not a problem. So, but if it's the same story, then obviously the one who said tanning has been memorized better because it's an addition coming from independent and capable authorities. So the one who narrated narrated an abridged version without the tanning. But the one with the tanning clarifies that that's the tanning is 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 meant. But it's always clearly that you can use the, the hide of, of of dead animals uh, if it is in in such a usage that ritual clearly is needed. Like for example, for clothing, yeah. obviously without tanning it, it would disintegrate and stink anyway. But independent of that, from practicality point of view, if the, with tanning, if it's for ritual pure, like you want to use it as sejada for salah or you want to use it as clothing, it has to be ritually pure. But if you want to use it for something else, then it's no problem. If it's literally not pure, that should be no problem. So that is it. It will some fiqh will depend on that, obviously. Mm -hmm. But from narrative point of view, if it is the same story, then we have to find out who who who, who uh, if this additional the addition of the word of turning is is. Uh, is corroborated properly, and the, the one who added this addition are not are not contradicting others, and it's reliable. And it's not a contradiction; it's a clear, it's a it's clarification and addition. Category category sixteen: additions of reliable transmitters and the treatment of them. Ma'rifat ziyadat al thiqat wa hukmiha. Very important. Yeah. This is a sublime sublime discipline which deserves careful attention. The authorities Abu Bakr bin Ziyad al Nisaburi, Abu Naim al Jurjani and Abu Walid Abu Walid al Qurayshi have been mentioned for their knowledge of the textual additions relevant to the study of law in certain hadith. According to what Abu Bakr al Khatib related, the doctrine of the majority of scholars of law and hadith is that an addition of a reliable transmitter is acceptable when he is alone in transmitting it. Right. Irrespective of whether the addition is from a single individual who related the hadith once, without the addition, and another time with it, or whether the addition is from someone other than the transmitter who related the hadith without the addition. This is contrary to the view of those scholars of hadith who reject additions without exception, and the view of those who reject additions from the original transmitter but accept, accept them from someone else. Hmm. We cited above Al Khatib al Baghdadi's relation from the majority of hadith experts to the effect that if some people give a hadith with a cohesive, it's not wasal al hadith, uh, and others give it as loose uh, of salahu, mm -hmm. the verdict is in favor of the ones who transmit it as loose, even if the addition rendering it as cohesive is from a reliable transmitter. So, what does uh, loose, you know, no, I'm sorry. It was Mursal, Mursal. Oh, Mursal, Mursal. Or broken. I said, yeah. it's not only if the tabi is missing, a sahab is missing. Anyway. Could be any anywhere. But the, we, when we discussed that, we mentioned that this is, uh, and he mentioned the issue of the, the addition of the reliable nar narrator is acceptable. It is discussed there. But uh, we commented that, that there's two different types of additions. One is addition in snad that has another nature than addition in the text. Additional text is another issue because any narrator will uh, will sometimes abridge the hadith depending upon need, and this is common everywhere from the time of the Sahaba onward. Because, because in the relevant section, yeah, yeah, sometimes he mentions on the relevant section. Uh, sometimes uh, he's not focusing, and then he misses certain words. And another time when he doesn't have his own manuscript, 
at the time. So the same narrator could narrate sometimes an abridged version. And Bukhari is an example, for example, in the hadith he has. Usually, one in the hadith in one place, the first place maybe, or the, the most important place for him, is narrated in full. In other places, narrated in abridged. And sometimes it's the same hadith with the same style. Sometimes, because Bukhari likes to have many variations, he narrates from another channel. Which we don't know is the abridging from that channel or from yes. his sheikh or from him. We are not certain sometimes, but it's clearly that this is the same story. Like, for example, man a sheikh and sheikh of the sheikh are different, but then the tabi'i and the sahabi are the same, and the story is the same, but it's abridged here. So we are not sure unless we compare with other books and so on, we find really it's narrated in full with the with the Bukhari who abridged it, for example. So this is regarded as, as no problem and standard. But in Isnad, dropping someone in Isnad is regarded as a calamity. It is not a matter of, 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 of negotiation. There is no matter, there is no excuse uh, that you drop anyone from Isnad. I want you to drop one from Isnad, unless you say, I don't have Isnad with me now, but it is in my book, Musnad, or something like that. I want you to drop an Isnad, or you, you are wavering in Isnad, you are a weak narrator, and your question mark is around you. So this is, this is, an essential difference between Isnad and Matan. So mentioning the issue of losers, as we have already discussed earlier, that is different. There in his yada or, or change or shit, even variation in name, like between Umar and Amr, like in the case we discussed, where, where, uh, where Malik uh, was outclassed by many who are who narrated Amr, and he narrated Umar. So we must judge that Malik was mistaken, even if he points to the house of Umar ibn Uthman. Meaning that is this one, I am certain it is this one, but he's mistaken still. Because one single human being will not be able to outshine and outclass all the. The only excuse someone say, Could maybe Zohri was, yeah. you know, Zohri himself was, was maybe confused sometimes. Most of the time he says Amr, and one time he himself made a mistake. So the mistake is not from, from, uh, from Malik, but it's from Zohri. But isn't there another possibility that, because you said that um, Omar and Amr were both sons of Uthman. So it could have been unchained through both of them. No, but Zohri narrates only from one of them. So oh, it's, right. that's the That's the problem. It could be. And in that case, you may have a knife to say, this one and this one both narrated to me. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's very well possible. But it's, that then we have another evidence that there's no way of For example, we have one hadith that one, one tabi'i said, and they checked to 20 with 30 plus of the children of the Sahaba, of the Ansar. And they all reported the same exactly. So if we find that narrated by two, three, four names, we are not confused because we know that the man said with 30, and maybe in one session he had the list of the 30 reported to someone, and other sessions he is happy to re report from two or three only. Mm. So that, so yeah, there will be indication for that. So it's not as very simple. It's much more dangerous than, than you think because the reliability of the, cha of the chain relies on it. And, uh, and that's where many of the fabricators and they try to play with the isnad. And they call it Sarqat al Hadith. That you find the hadith which is that you like the matan, but all the, the asanid which has come to you are, are not very satisfactory, so you fix the nice isnad for it. And that's called Sarqat al Hadith. And this is one of the worst type of fabrication. Obviously, whoever the, the Sarqat al Hadith or accused of it is bad out, is rejected and declared to be a liar, definitely. So that's. Uh, I can't summarize all the narrators, so I narrate from you, you narrate from Abdul Basim. Yeah. But the, the scholar thinks I'll drop uh, Dr. Masri. That would be Tadlis. And if it's yeah, either Tadlis or it's a weak memory, and so on, this is, this is not, not excusable. If you drop it with the word, with, the, with using the word Haddathani for al basit then you are a liar, you are finished. Nobody will accept anything from you. They have said from An al basit An Abdul basit that's fine, because you dropped Mas'ari, that's okay. But this will be, you will be mudallis, and people will be doubting your An, yeah, always. Because, why, why, what are you hiding? But this is unnegotiable. Yeah, that's the question. but it's unnegotiable. Like a bridge in the sense that uh, any narrations, they'll know that it's between us three. So if we drop one person, the scholar will know you were oh yeah, because because, because we said this is a public science, and there's so many students, and that's the, the way they catch they catch the, the fabricator, they catch this one, and that's the reason they are all his always hesitating from a single channel of of narrations. But the single channel which is acceptable usually go through authorities which have been tested with thousands of other hadith, 
and found reliable. That's, that's the reason it's still accepted. So there is no reason to believe that they fabricated this hadith, which is even the matan is mustaqim and beautiful. So why should they fabricate on one in their lifetime? And they may be not at the time when they fabri supposed to be fabricated aware that it's singular. They're always afraid that someone else uh, is, is, is uh, have narrated something and then they know they will be caught. They will, will be, will be, all that will be caught. There's no escape. No, without even uh, citing the metaphysical proof that Allah is the, the protector of the dhikr, leave that. Even, even the most intelligent ones have, who have fixed isnad were, were caught. There's no escape. As no doubt. In the early generations, because of the reliability and the participation in jihad and devotion, that uh, the phenomena is very little, but there were many corroborating evidences. In later generations, every school has been scrutinized uh, for every generation. In later, like for example, from the time of Shu'ban, Sufyan Thawri, and onward, just one hadith in which a question mark is about you, a strong question mark, is enough to ban you and finish you completely. One. That's it. No need for two or three mistakes, just one. Nobody will excuse that, say, he has fixed it, he is, but he's a liar. Right away, without any, any, any argument or discussion. Yeah. So it's not as different than matan. Singularity in addition in matan, that's no problem because matans tend to be abridged, to be expanded. Um, Sometimes a word will, will, even if you are reading from a script, sometimes you skip a word like you're reading and you lift your eye and then you jump on an important sentence or something like that. And very often you have a hadith, for example, Shu'ba narrating that uh, four items I say, I remember three, but one is lapsed in my mind now, and things like that. But it's not, no. If you don't remember it's sad, then you say, it's not, it's in by books. Or like for in one hadith says, and there's a man there in Isnad, I don't remember his name, but it's in my book, I will get it. And then he got it several years later. He found the book and narrated the full name. I was looking for it years, because he has so many manuscripts. And then he found it by accident. But he said clearly, there's a man there, but I don't remember his name, but it's in my books. I know it's in my books. So this is not the same. So let's continue with that in the case of addition. But in as a mental principle, the addition of the trustworthy authority in is in Matan must be accepted. Otherwise, how can we accept his basic na narrative? In it's not is different because the nature of it's not is different. And it was discussed already previously on the okay, um, So the three subcategories that Ibn Salah Rahimallah divides it into are as follows. Subcategory number one. It contradicts and is incompatible with that, with what the rest of the reliable transmitters related. The verdict on this kind of hadith is in car is rejection, as was previously stated in the category on anomalous hadith. Yeah. Category number two, subcategory number two. It contains absolutely no incompatibility or contradiction with what the others related, like the hadith of uh, the, like the hadith, the totality of which a reliable transmitter is alone in relating and through which he does not come into conflict at all with what others relate. This kind of hadith is acceptable, and Al-Khatib has indeed claimed that the scholars have a consensus on this. Something similar was discussed in, uh, uh, above in the category on anonymous hadith. <coughs> Section number three. The case which falls somewhere between these two levels, like the addition of a word in a hadith, which the rest of those whom related the hadith do not give. An example is the hadith Malik related from Nafi'i from Ibn Umar that Rasulullah placed the obligation of paying the zakat, um, zakat al fitr, it would be the arms tax of Ramadan is translated here, on all men and women, free and slave of the Muslims, ala kulli hur aw abd, zakar aw untha min al Muslimin. Abu Isa Tirmidhi said Malik was alone among reliable transmitters and relating it with the addition of the words min al-Muslimin, of the Muslims. Ubaidullah bin Umar, Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani and others related this hadith from Nafi' from Ibn Umar without the uh, addition. More than one expert, including Shafi'i and Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahimahullah, Jami'an adopted the addition and cited it as a proof and Allah knows best. Yeah, because the addition is, 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 is proper and logical and makes sense because uh, the, because the, the, the other hadith said the Messenger of Allah made ob ob an obligation for the Sadaqat al-Fadr as a verification for the Sa'im. Mm. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but then what if the, for example, the child, they don't fast. The child is in fitrah. That's for the child. For the, for the adults, if he's not Muslim, he's not fasting, so he doesn't need any purification. And you have purified yourself by zakat on you for yourself, for your wife, and so on. Mm-hmm. So that that's, this may, makes better sense. So and the addition clarify the hukum that uh, this only will apply obviously only if you have slaves which are not Muslims, which can happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, on the other hand, the other one, the door is open for you to bring zakat out if you don't want to be if you want to be over cautious. If you think it's liability on you, not only because you are liable for those belonging to you. For your children, for your wives, and for your slaves. They say, oh, no, I have a Christian slave or a Hindu slave. I, I ought to bring out for him also because he's, he's, my, he's part of my ownership. That's fine. You can do. No problem. But the obligation is only really established for, for the Muslimin. Mm. Another example of that is the hadith. The earth was made a mosque for us and its soil was made as a purifi- purifier for us. Abu Malik uh, Sa'ad bin Tariq al-Asja'i was alone in giving this addition and the wording of the rest of the transmissions of hadith is the earth was made a mosque and a purifier for us. The hadith and similar versions resemble the first subcategory of addition in the respect that the version the group relates is general and the version the, the individual with the addition related, the individual relates What's to the Abu addition Ma- is specific. Abu Malik, what, what is his addition? Is just really that it's soil. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, the yeah, word yeah. soil. Well, the other one works as said the Ard is the masjid, and it's and what uh, tahar, what tahur, what tahur. Yeah, and the other so, one mentions. And this, but this is again you no know, contradiction because no, 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 it's, it's, it's a special yeah. case that the if if the soil of it is tahur, then it is tahur. You can pray on it and so on. Yeah. But the other one is more general. So it's not only the soil, maybe the, uh, the rocks. Clearly the rocks would be. Mm-hmm. Anyway, any dry material is usually tahur and it's proven otherwise. So that uh, does not make any real difference really. It contains an, uh, an accidental difference and a species of contradiction which causes the lo- uh, legal uh, rulings contained in the two versions to vary. It is also like the second subcategory in that there is no fundamental incompatibility to it between the two why, versions. Why the ruling would vary? I think he mentioned that that one's just for the soil, isn't it? Whereas that with the other one would be general for the earth. Yeah, but we have if we have both a hadith then we have no problem. Yes, the one who received only the hadith about the soil, then he will recognize but he will he will also know from the general principle that anything in the universe is pure until proven otherwise. So the stones are or the rocks are also pure. Maybe someone say the mud is, is liquid, the mud is water with soil, so it's pure. So I don't think it's, it's only only some who has a Jewish mentality of splitting hairs will get stuck in that. So from that you can deduce on that, from that you can deduce on that. So it's very different. The Prophet may have said that in one occasion, that in one occasion, just to just to have various variation. And then, and then when he stressed the soil, the Torah, is because people use it for tayammum. Hmm. While the other one just purify generally the earth is pure everywhere you can pray everywhere because it's masjid so everywhere is pure, but it's Torah can purify you also in a symbolic act of, of tayammum instead of uh, uh, the symbolic act of wudu because the act of wudu is also a symbolic act. Does this mean also the fact that the earth is pure generally? That means the whole world, the whole issue of wet earth and mud and all that kind of stuff. All of it is covered. Yeah, it's all fine. of it, all yeah. of it is fine. So everything is as pure until proven otherwise. Mm-hmm. In the case of the addition which makes the loose hadith cohesive, ziyadat al-wasl ma'al irsal, there is basically it, it's like where there's another narration that connects the chains that that was yeah. otherwise broken is what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There is a contradiction similar to the one we mentioned above between cohesion and looseness. The question grows in importance because looseness is a form. Of impungement in a hadith or weakness is uh, yeah. Yeah. or the preference for the cohesive form and giving preference to it is like discrediting is like a discrediting evaluation of a transmitted jarh presiding over an accrediting one ta'deel it is justified on the basis that discrediting is given precedence because it contains an addition of knowledge and the addition here belongs to the transmitter who gives the hadith as cohesive and Allah knows best. No, not necessarily. This, this has to be analyzed more carefully every situation by itself. 
principle. Because there's there's the danger always that uh, that uh, someone will add some person that is not not deliberately, but because this narrator is known to be narrating from this sheikh, like from Abu Burda, the son of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. So you will have the day like Hadith Lani Kahil Abiwari is actually Abu Burda from Messenger of Allah without mentioning Abu Musa. That's what's well established and reliable. Yeah, mm -hmm. mentioning Abu Musa, making it connected, making an authority, is usually mentioned by weak narrators, by Mudallisin. And, uh, so what does that mean? The Hadith is weak then? Yeah, it's not Hadith. Yeah, it's true. Subhanallah. Yeah. Where is it related? Hmm? Where is the Hadith related? The main one. The in various books. Okay. Not in Bukhari and Muslim, because it, uh, he, he recognized the issue with this and he avoided it. Run away from it, justifiably so. Right. So they rely on the other hadith of uh, Sulaiman ibn Musa, the Mashkhila, uh, whoever a woman married without permission of her, while he's a headache, it's bottle, bottle, bottle. But the hadith is bottle, bottle, bottle. Sulaiman Musa is very bad in memorization and has committed so many mistakes in the hadith. I can list you all of them if you want. He's not a reliable authority. And he narrates that from Zuhri, and Zuhri denied even ever narrating that to him. It's most like from another Zuhri, the cousin of Zuhri is also called Zuhri, mm. and one of the Hadith scholars said, I think it is the Habith who did it, and <laughs> smuggled it in the mind of Suleiman ibn Musa. This one is known to be very, very unreliable, and even if some people accuse him of fabricating and lying, and deceiving some gullible shaykh like Suleiman ibn Musa. Suleiman ibn Musa is a weak narrator, he's not a strong one, at least. Although you know is attacking his honesty and his, uh, but, Fine, but his, yeah. his uh, level of reliability is miserable. Yeah. He ought to be classified as weak. So this hadith is also not an authority. But most take it, take it and run with it for fiqh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Including when Hazm, who is amazingly generally very critical, but in this one he was not. Yeah, but this is another issue. But you see, they say here uh, adding one person will, will have catastrophic effects. And it's this removing one person will have catastrophic effects. Because effect. it apparently strengthens yeah. a weak hadith, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. On the other hand, we know that some narrators tend to do irsal because they rely on, on, on their mashayikh, or they are uh, giving the hadith in sermons, like al Hasan al-Basri, Qala Rasulullah, etc., and dropping the Sahabi. We know this habit. So if it comes for him narrated with connected isnad, that's fine. That's accepted. That's no problem. Because and the authorities. Uh, yeah, he, he's no problem with him. Like, for example, some people ask him, say, well, we want you to, to tell us with Isnad, because you usually don't give us Isnad. Say, ask you, no problem, which what do you want? Say, the hadith of this, and say, this hadith I hear from this, and this, or from this, through two, say, two Sahaba, and so on, and give that. And then after that, say, he said, we were really confused about this Sheikh. He knows his Isnad, he's very reliable, but he, his habit, because he gives sermons and general speech and education, he said, Messenger Allah said, without giving the Isnad. But if he's asked about Isnad, he gives it. So people of that habit are known. They have this one. It's the same person give you sometimes the, the version for, for sermons and speeches and the version for, for Hadith scholarship uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. Especially if you visualize him, he will give you that. And things like that. That's okay. But this is a well-known person, usually important personality who have a high standing in the society for for the sermons or for the preaching as well, like al Hassan al-Basri. Hmm? So, uh, category 17, isolated hadith, Ma'rifat al-Afrad, the uh, unique or the isolated hadith. Mm -hmm. The significant aspects of this category have already been discussed in the immediately preceding categories. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I have given this topic its own chapter as Abdul, uh, Abu Abdullah uh, al-Hakim did mm -hmm. uh, in Ulum al-Hadith. Ma'rifat al al-Hadith, yeah. yeah okay. Okay. <laughs> to cover what remains to be discussed on this topic, we say isolated hadith fall into the subcategories of absolutely isolated and isolated in relation to a particular aspect. Just a quick question, is this the Al-Hakim of the Mustadr? Yeah, yeah, this is the Al-Hakim of Abdul Al-Hakim, yeah. And that book is existent as well. What's the Mustadr? As, as in, it's, uh, no, no, Mustadr, the... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all okay. exist, yeah. Okay. Mm. The, the first kind is the hadith, a single transmit uh, of... The first kind is the hadith of a single transmitter. Uh, sorry, the first kind is the hadith a single transmitter and no one else relates. Mm -hmm. Its subcategories and treatment have just been covered, so mm -hmm. we've covered that. Okay, subcategory two. The second kind is isolated in a relative sense. For instance, the hadith that, that a single reliable transmitter and no other reliable transmitters 
relate. This is virtually the same as the first subcategory. Other examples of this are the hadith about which the following is said. This is hadith of the Meccans or the Syrians or the Kufans or the Khorasanis and no one else relates it. Or no one else related it from X except Y even though it was related through several lines of transmission from people other than X or the Basrans were alone in transmitting it from the uh, Medinans or the Khorasanians were alone in transmitting it from the Meccans and the like. We will not cite the examples of this subcategory at length since the matter can be understood without them. Nothing along these lines necessitates that the hadith be judged as weak unless someone applies the statements the Meccans were alone in transmitting it or the Basrans were alone in transmitting it from the, Medin, uh, from the Medinans or something like that to a hadith that only a single Meccan or Basran and so forth related. Ascribing the hadith to the scholars of the city as a group in that way the deed of a single tribesman may be ascribed figuratively to the entire tribe. Indeed, Abu Abdullah al-Hakim did so in the manner we are addressing. In this case, the hadith is treated in the same fashion as those in the first subcategory, and Allah knows best. Muhammad, we start with page 67, category 18. Category 18. Yeah. Defective hadith. Marifat al Hadith al Mu'allal. Mm-hmm. The scholars of Hadith call this kind of Hadith Ma'lul. They use that construction as to the jurist in reference to the subject of legal analogy, the cause and the effect. Al Illa wa al Ma'lul. The specialists in the Arabic language and lexicography disapprove of the construction Ma'lul. Be aware that the subject of the defects, Illal, of Hadith is one of the most exalted, precious, a noble of the sciences of hadith. Only those possess, possessing retention, experience and penetrating intelligence can become proficient in it. Mm-hmm. The defects mm-hmm. consist of the hidden causes of impungement in hadith. The defective hadith is one in which a defect impunging its soundness is detected, although it outwardly appears to be free of the defect. That may apply to an isnad made up of reliable transmitted, transmitters which outwardly seems to fulfil the conditions of soundness. Someone being alone in transmitting the hadith as well as others contradicting him, aiding catching the defect. Additionally, certain associated circumstances alert the expert in this matter to an occurrence of looseness in a connected hadith, irsal fil mausul, of halting in a raised hadith, waqaf fi al fil marfu of the interpolation of one hadith into another or of the commission of some kind of mistake by someone. On the basis of these associated circumstances, the expert becomes suspicious about the hadith and he either passes judgment, i.e. against it, because of them, or he hesitates, suspending judgment about the hadith. Mm -hmm. All of these things, as long as they are present in a hadith, prevent declaring it sound, sahih. Often they declare a connected hadith to be defective on the basis of looseness. For instance, the hadith appears with a connected isnad and it also appears with an interrupted isnad which is stronger, that is, better documented and so forth, than the isnad of the connected version. For this reason, the books, the books on the defects of hadith include all of the chains of transmission. Should, at least, yeah, no. Abu Bakr al-Khatib said, quote, The way to discover the defect of a hadith is to collect the lines of transmission, examine the differences of its transmitters, and examine their position in regard to retention and their status in regard to exactitude and precision. End quote. It is related that Ali bin al-Madini has said, chapter, If the lines of transmission of the hadith are not gathered, its error will not become apparent. Yeah. Sometimes, and this is more common, the defect occurs in the isnad and sometimes it occurs in the text. Sometimes the defect occurring in the isnad impunge, impunges the soundness of both the isnad and the text, as is the case when the defect of looseness and halting it is detected. Sometimes the defect in the isnad impunges only the soundness of the isnad without impunging the soundness of the text. The hadith which the reliable transmitter, Ya'la ibn Ubaid, related from Sufyan al-Thawri, from Amr bin Dinar, from Ibn Umar, from the Prophet peace upon him, quote, both of the parties in sale have the option of refusal, 
end quote, is an example of a hadith containing a defect in its isnad, which does not impunge the soundness of the text. This is an isnad uninterrupted through the relation of one upright transmitter from another, yet it is defective and unsound. The text is, in any case, sound. The defect in the transmission is in Ya'la ibn Ubaid saying from Amr ibn Dinar. In fact, the hadith is from Abdullah ibn Dinar from Ibn Umar. The authoritative students of Sufyan al related it this way from him. Ya'la ibn Ubaid made a mistake saying Amr bin Dinar. And Amr and Abdullah both as authorities. <laughs> instead of Abdullah ibn Dinar, both of whom are reliable. An illustration of a defect in the text is the phrase making explicit the prohibition of reciting in the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate, which Muslim alone in including in the hadith of Anas. Some people regarded the relation of the aforementioned phrase as defective when they saw that the majority of transmitters merely said they used to commence their recitation with praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, without any explicit objection to saying in the name of Allah, merciful, compassionate. And this is what Bukhari and Muslim were in agreement on including in their Sahih. These people believed that the transmitter who related the hadith with the aforementioned phrase prohibiting the rec recitation of the of the Bismillah, paraphrased the text according to his understanding of it, and he understood Anas's words, they used to commence with, Alhamdulillah, to mean that they did not pronounce Bismillah. And so the transmitter related the hadith in the way he understood it. The person who did that erred because the meaning of the hadith is that the surah, that is the chapter of the Quran they used to begin with, was the Fatiha, and the original text of the hadith contains no objection to saying the Bismillah. A number of other matters are relevant to that, including the fact that it is established that Anas was asked about commencing with Bismillah, and he said that he did not have anything from the Messenger of Allah upon that topic, and Allah knows best. Be aware that the term defect, contrary to its original sense, is sometimes applied without qualification to the rest of the causes of impungement, yeah. other than those that we have mentioned. The hidden ones, yeah which take hadith from the state of soundness to the state of weakness and keep them from being acted upon. For that reason, you find in the books on the defects of hadith a good deal of <clears throat> discrediting for falsehood, neglectfulness and carelessness and other similar types of discreditation. Tirmidhi even called abrogation a defect of hadith. Indeed, one scholar uh, unqualifiedly applied the term defect to mean which indisputably do not impunge, like someone transmitting as loose a hadith with which a reliable and precise transmitter gives as supported. He even said that the defective sound, sahih ma'lul, is one of the subcategories of the sound hadith, just as someone else said that the anomalous sound, sahih shad, is one of the forms of the sound hadith, and Allah knows best. And but this is, this is being too liberal. The, the best is to stick to the, <coughs> that the, if there's a hidden defect, it looks it's apparently sound, but it has hidden defects. That's the best definition of illa. But if they discuss a hadith of illa to whom, uh, that this hadith is not uh, accepted because this uh, narrator is weak or, or it's broken, Yes, it's mentioned casually, but it's not the topic what they are studying in the in the in the in the category of ilal. The books named ilal hadith are usually concerned about these hidden defects. There are dedicated books, and uh, very few, not very many, and only first class authorities are masters of ilal. For example, masters of ilal were Ali ibn Madini, maybe the first one. They were before, but it was not a systematic you know, science with books written in it. Then um, from his students, that's his students at Bukhari and the Saji. Muslim is not that strong in Ilal like these two. Uh, Termidi has Ilal also, and mostly he then uh, reports his question to his Sheikh, Muhammad Ismail Bukhari. We will say, say Muhammad Sayyid, meaning Muhammad Ismail al Bukhari, that's Termidi. And we have Darqutni, he's a master of Ilal. And few others through history. And uh, uh, it's a very intriguing uh, analytical science, indeed. But, uh, and a few books, but usually it is 
there are some books written specifically about that, but uh, you will find uh, will find mostly uh, during discussion of a hadith or books of fiqh, you find some island discussion either there. So gathering all of them would be really a, a major job to be done. But it should be possible now in the computer age to collect all of that in one place. Mm -hmm. So you know his example of this Yala ibn Ubaid yeah. and his m missing the guy uh, Amr uh, ibn Dinar or instead, Abdullah ibn then, Dinar. Because they, they are all uh, very close names, so it's in his mind he confuses. Even even if the Sheikh was dictating, he may confuse because he's more familiar maybe with Amr ibn Dinar than Abdullah ibn Dinar. But both are authorities, mm -hmm. so if it would have been Amr ibn Dinar, it is trustworthy and it's not Sahih, if it would have been, but it is really not Amr ibn Dinar, it's Abdullah ibn Dinar. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sufyan Thawri took that hadith from Abdullah ibn Dinar, not from Amr ibn Dinar. So, mentioning Amr ibn is a mistake. But is, is that enough to make it weak? No, it's not. But, but it is sure that the Ali ibn Abid made a mistake there. So this is not, is, is not a correct one. It's, mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. How did they determine that it was? Because if they both... Because, uh, because all other students of the Fushan al narrated it. Sufyan al from Abdullah ibn Dinar. Oh. But if they're both brothers, they might not come back. No, they're not brothers. Well. But uh, independent of that, not, uh, not necessary. If uh, equal numbers have narrated, then, then you will find usually a channel will say from both Abdullah and Amr. Then it is clear. But in that case, uh, it's, it's clear. Sometimes we know that even we don't need to compare because this uh, Sheikh, for example, never uh, met Amr ibn Dinar, met only Abdullah. I'm not sure if I think Sufyan has taken from both, mm. but uh, mostly from Abdullah ibn Dinar. But sometimes we know he himself said, I, I traveled to that city, mm. I didn't meet him, or something like that. But this is due to the confusion of names. The names are very close. For example, so this is a illa. Now, what you do with some, some of the hadith, for example, when you find a some of the not being consistent and stuff, would that be considered? You know, oh, there's illa. He mentioned also one of the as the narrator has imagined things and added. He mentioned an example of illa in the matin. Oh, so, no, what I mean is when you when you do your works and stuff, sometimes you. Yeah, this is one of the things I do also. Both first the isnad and the matin, and then both, and see if the matin is acceptable and making sense and. Uh, and fitting reasonably, or there's any issue with the matin, that would be then of the impinging of the. Uh, then one of the narrators did not memorize properly, or he did uh, re rephrase something incorrectly. He misunderstood it. And you use the aid of, through the aid of computers. You that would bring you things in front of you easier and put everything in one place quickly, and then just cut and paste quicker. than like the time passed, you cannot cut and paste. You have to do all in your head, which is an enormous. Enormously painful process, but here mm. it's easy. It's on the screen, put them, get all the channels and put them in order. Like for example, uh, ending with a Sahabi, then another Sahabi, and then the Sahabi, his students in order, and the students with the students in order. Then you see, then you can almost in one glance, with a bit of training, obviously, see what what is the problem there, who made a mistake, who did not make, and so on. Hmm? Does, does this become more difficult? You know, on, on the first bit when he says Abu Bakr al-Khatib said, you know, you're collecting the lines of transmission, examining the differences. Does that become more difficult if you only have, I don't know, say for example, like Hadith Sufyani, you only have one Hadith? If you have one 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 uh, line of transmission, then this is not accessible, but usually then it has no illa. It's either have a weak narrator or they have all authorities and there's no issue with it. Mm. This will be the, the shahad. Mm. The, the sahih, yeah. Are there, um, are there more defects with the isnat or matan? Or Mostly with isnat. Mostly with isnat. But there are a few defects with matan. Uh, <coughs> example is this hadith of Anas. Another example is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that one uh, creation would be three. Uh, 40 days, mutra, 40 days, halakha, 40, and you get the impression it's 40 plus 40 plus 40, and many fuqah have said, until the spirit is uh, is blown, it takes 120 days, four months, which is not correct. It's actually 40, mudra, 40, halakha, all of them the same 40. The total mm -hmm. is, and this is corroborated even by, by modern science, and by another hadith from another sahabi. Just 40, or you mean it's 120? No, no, it's 40, 40, 40, is just one 40, but he misunderstood this. In the same 40, it is mutah, and, and another hadith says clearly, and then after 40 days, or 41, or 42, according to knowledge of Allah, the spirit is responsible. So it's very clear. Mm -hmm. It's one stage. It's only one stage. All the three stages are in this. And then after 42 days, 
then abortion so is not permitted except if the mother life is in danger etc before that it is it has no independent life yet so they can, she can abort at her liberty for example and other things and Muslim scholar with up to four months because misunderstanding the hadith you only see that if you put all all the narrations and also other evidences like for example for medical evidences and so on then you mm. balance things so as all these things play a role that's in matin that's an example of matin but this will open other door because the same hadith contain other things which also issues of qadr and so on you can also reject them then based on that which is good <laughs> yeah. yeah good things there yeah so and things like that especially issues of matter about the issues of qadr and so on needs some thorough matter studies but we're not going to get involved in that it's enough headache with other things <laughs> leave that now later later next generation will do that yeah as it as it required isn't it if, you come yeah. if, it, if someone uh, excited the problem then we'll be forced to 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 go to that like for example recently uh one one hadith in egypt i was haku hawaini who is a student of albani under respect to the egypt like an authority and so on uh, spoke about female circumcision said it's wajib and so on make made a big fuss so uh i studied the matter obviously he diverted me from the other work for about a week but we have uh, completed everything ready the only thing is that there are certain diagrams, so I'll put them in an appendix with a PDF for the password saying, if you go there at your own risk, because you'll see pictures which may be offensive for those who thinks that Aura is, you cannot look at Aura. So this is the password. If you open, then you're at your own risk <laughs> with diagrams and how it's stitched and all these things. <laughs> you have to. There's no, no, no shame in religion. You have to. And then uh, really, we, we have... Uh, rooted all his theory from the root starting from Abraham alayhi salam to the mm. Jews and everything all complete in one place so if they force us it's we'll do it's been a narration no one's really come across any yeah. narrations the computer being a practical actually the narration is coming is almost prohibitive the narration which is established I have established it also but also Albani said it's, uh, it's Hassan mm. but I, I proved that it's Sahih actually it says if you do Khifad it's actually the exact Arabic word is Khafati Fa'ashimmi keep it high which seems always a contradiction. So you cannot keep it high because if it is high, if, if the clitoris is, is big by itself, this is Allah's action, not your action. So how can I make it high? Meaning, don't lower it. Mm. So if you do lowering, don't lower it. Meaning, the lowering is discredited and only minimal lowering is permitted. And they say, and don't, ex don't be excessive because it's more pleasurable for the husband and more nice for the look. So, if that's so, that means if if you don't do the the, the, the female circumcision almost like 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 a cosmetic uh, surgery, it is off limit. So all these what's done in Africa, especially the pharaonic style, is a criminal act. People who are doing that should be should be really their hands should be cut and legs mm. for this criminal act. So that's all verified there. The only thing is that the only thing is that that I I, I discussed with someone said, oh, Sheikh, don't put the pictures. I will put them in a PDF, which can be opened by a password. So, someone someone goes there with that. This is you open at your own risk. It's the password. It's a public password. But if you go, meaning you deliberately want to see, it's your your own risk. <laughs> with some interesting diagrams there. <laughs> There's the the one used in some places in Sudan and in Egypt. They stitch everything and keep only a hole for 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 the urine and for uh, the menses. And then when the, she gives birth, they have to cut open. It's almost criminal. There's, yeah, and so back. This is criminal. This is definitely criminal. But wouldn't this invoke the hadith of no harm or? Yeah, yeah generally, it's mutala. This is this is mutilation. This is taghir khalqillah. So this uh, this should be really uh, staunchly being opposed. So the benefit with this study is to have all these issues in one place and then put them at well, to rest. Did he, quote, did he quote anything for his wajib opinion? Not only that, Allah said, اتبعوا ملة إبراهيم حنيفا and Ibrahim for him khitan was wajib, which is not true. Even if it's for him wajib, it was a special test for him mm. and the speciality of the Prophet. And discuss all these subcategories. Mm. It will be interesting really if we can get that translated. Mm. 
especially for Africa. And I don't think it's interesting for Asia because it's not known in Asia. The only place in Asia is is Indonesia, and this is because the Hadrami, the people from South Arabia, they brought Islam there, and they have this disease, this infection. So they took the infection with them. And the, to add insult to injury, their madhab is Shafi'i, and Shafi'i says Khitan is wajib. Like also in Somalia and so on, and that's is the and that's what 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 caused the calamity for the poor Indonesian woman. Madam <laughs> Shafi, <laughs> we should have come and rebel against Shafi. <laughs> no, no, we don't want to, to go to the such extremes, but it, it should be finished, inshallah. Huh? I will post it, inshallah. Today I don't think, but maybe tomorrow, one day after tomorrow. In, in our side. But as I said, I, with the final discussion is that these diagrams, do, they should belong there, but we know that some people are having uh, false piety and some people have me as sensitivity. So we'll put it in a PDF. Say in the PDF uh, the, is the medical reports and the diagrams. Mm. And this is the password. Actually, it's HD.net. Do you put this on the website now? We'll put it tomorrow, inshallah, one day after tomorrow. In the uh, a bit of a yeah, 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 yeah. We had commented just in the broadcast. Yeah, to make the the countries and and upheaval, and you got the the world current president from the old regime, and he's talking about circumcision cell. Whatever it is, yeah, it's been there. No, a few days ago. It's a few days ago. It's not not following. <laughs> Page seventy one, category nineteen, disrupted hadith, Marifat al Mutarib min al Hadith. A disrupted hadith is one. Wavering actually, wavering Mutarib. Yeah. A disrupted wavering hadith is one transmitted in different forms. One of its transmitters relates it one way, and another relates it in a different way from the first. We call it disrupted, quote-unquote, only when the two transmissions are equal. If one of the two relations is preferable to the extent that the other can no longer stand up against it because its transmitter is more retentive, studied with the teacher longer, or there exists some other cogent reason for favouring it, and the verdict is in favour of the preferable transmission. Mm -hmm. In that case, the hadith may not be characterised as quote-unquote disrupted without qualification, and it is not treated in the same way. Sometimes the disruption occurs in the text of the hadith and sometimes in the isnad. Sometimes it comes from a single transmitter and sometimes it occurs among a number of its transmitters. Yeah. Disruption makes a hadith weak since it indicates that it was not accurately preserved, and Allah knows best. Yeah. An example of this is the hadith we heard from Ismail ibn Umayyah, from Abu Amr ibn Muhammad ibn Huraith, from his grandfather Huraith, from Abu Huraira, from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, concerning someone who wants to pray. Quote, if he does not find a stick to plant in the ground in front of himself, let him draw a line on the ground. End quote. And as, as a shield here. Yeah. Bishr ibn al Mufaddal and Rawah ibn al Qasim related it from Ismail that way. Uh, Sufyan Afawi. Who's the second one? Bishr ibn Mufaddal, this no, and the other? Rawah Ruh, 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 Ruh ibn, al Ruh ibn al Qasim mm -hmm. related it from Ismail that way. And then Sufyan Afawi re related it from Ismail, from Abu Amr ibn Huraith, from his father, from Abu Huraira. Humayd bin al-Aswad related it from Ismail, from Abu Amr ibn Muhammad ibn Huraith bin Salim, from his father, from Abu Huraira. Wahayb and Abdul Warith related it from Ismail, from Abu Amr bin Huraith, from his grandfather Huraith. Abdul Razak said, Ibn Juraj said, Ismail heard hadith from Huraith ibn Ammar from Abu Huraira. This hadith actually contains even more disruption than we have mentioned mentioned and Allah knows best so I meaning Ismail did not did not uh, did not uh, retain it properly so, so there are various students which nobody is preferred over the others are in uh, writing through him various snads which cannot be all right at the same time sometimes the sometimes some people may make a mistake for example that narrate from Sufyan theory one channel to a Sahabi a similar hadith, a similar way to another Sahabi and so on. People like Sufyan Thawri, they have enormous hadith collection. So here, yeah, and they are interested, for, Sufyan was interested for the hadith about uh, 
about entering the, the government and cooperating with them to abstain from that and so on. So he may narrate the same text roughly from various channels, and maybe uh, they have slightly different texts, but uh, the students will summarize them in the same text. So that uh, Sufyan is having a similar hadith from various sources, it's possible because Sufyan is one of the biggest half of but not someone who is less important than Sufyan. You don't expect him to have it from various channels. If it has two channels, then it's wavering. But that here, in that case, it is clear just as is it from Harith or his father or grandfather. Uh, so obviously, things were not retained properly by Ismail, which weakens the hadith. Because either one, one is broken or is not broken. We don't know if this one reached his grandfather, took from him. But if he has been able himself to take from his father and his grandfather, it doesn't affect really the authenticity. The trabs, meaning the... Uh, and sometimes the reason of the trab that sometimes people call the grandfather also a father, mm. and so on. Mm. So all these things has to be sorted out. So not all the trab will, will weaken, but most of them will weaken, because usually they are serious, especially in the Isnad. So a firm conclusion can't be made regarding this narration? This one? Yeah. I can check it. I don't, I don't know this, this specific one, yeah. But ju just from his example, mm -hmm. he's showing... Different this ways. one shows this is weak. Yeah. This is weak. Unless we check. So that's an example of this now. Mm -hmm. Is there an example for, for the matter? As well? Did you give any example? Like, yeah. There's nothing in my mind. No, it seems to be mostly wavering. Is mostly in 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 in, in, in matter. Yeah. Could you say in in matter, it would occur if some significant part has been dropped? Uh, and 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 it won't be really wavering. It will be like abridgment or or an idraj or addition or mm -hmm. so it will be either weakening or you can sort out that this is really mundarij. It's not really original hadith. It's a comment of someone mm -hmm. who narrated. So the matan is different. It's, the wavering is usually in uh, in isnad. So matan would be uh, inaccuracy. Matan would be the bottom about what in thing. No, this is this is the matan. It's just we know what is an Israelite, which is script in Abu Huraira's mind. That's something else. That's uh, that matter contradicts some some fundamental principles of nature or of other principles of Islam. So it can be from Messenger of Allah, for example. That's one. That's one way of going. It's corroborated, but all it's narrated by all companions of Abu Huraira, seven, eight of the first class one, and goes all to Abu Huraira. There's no other Sahabi narrating that. And we know Abu Huraira was sitting with Kabul Ahbar and so on. So he may have been influenced in this and a few other hadith, for example. How about? Uh, but this is would be a defect. Really. This would be a illa in the matter. It looks at the vessel, but there's a deep illa because it's the the the, fa the, the so-called facts mentioned there are not facts. They are not true. Hmm. How about the hadith Tamim al Dari in Muslim? Just uh, that that will be that some some piece of the uh, uh, yes. Some people said said the matter is strange, but only if you regard it as a, a, a real a real a, 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 a trip. If you said. Because the only narrator is Fatah bin Khais, that she missed the beginning where he said, Tarim Dari reported to me his dream or a vision he saw. Khalas. That's mm. all the problems. Because visions and dreams are symbolic. Mm. And there's no one that there will be an animal which come and talk to you in dream and all these things. That's natural in dream. You have it every day. It's no problem. So it's, not wa it's not wavering or disrupting. No, that's that not that's wavering. That's, that's a, some, some, uh, some bit. We have a, even a, a worse one in uh, the one that, that, uh, Coitus interruptus is the secret word. Mm. And Jidama, the Messenger of Allah said that. But mm. four of the Sahabi narrated that he said the Jews are lying when they say that. So she missed that bit, the Jews are lying. The same with the hadith of Tamim al Dari, she missed the, the beginning, uh, the, the first sentence, when she he heard that Salah Jami'ah, she came and here saw him reporting this story. And uh, she missed maybe the first sentence. She mm -hmm. said, I mean, Dari reported to me that he has uh, saw a vision which synchronized nicely with what I have been telling you about the Dajjal, and he reports his, his vision. Mm -hmm. But that was only reported by Fatima bin Qais. Yeah. In other narrations? Yeah, that is the story of Jassasa. I'm saying, wouldn't there be another channel which is not public, things like that? Isn't it? In the Muslim, there would be other uh, narrators as well. Uh, nobody uh, otherwise narrated. But there's no reason to doubt that Fatima bin Qais is truthful. She's first class, but yeah. she missed that bit, that's it. And from, yeah, Fat from Fatima, many people na uh, narrated from here. Many, many people narrated from here.
Shabi and others, people of excellent retention. So it can't be, uh, uh, can't be an issue there. But she missed only that sentence, only one that sentence. Okay. And at the end, he said, "That's the, the, the hadith which Sabir had told me or reported to me. The word hadith can be mentioned about vision, can be about about a reality." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.